welcome to Fox Sports Lab NRL. I'm Eloise Sawyer and I'm joined with greats Josh Morris and Chris Lawrence alongside stats guru Tim Williams. To kick things off this week, we're going to tweak our highlights and blowtorch segment and take an early peek at the Dally M count. The Broncos have three in the top five, Payne Haas, Adam Reynolds and Reese Walsh. Can they keep this and maintain their rage, Chris? I think they can. Both, uh, all three, sorry, have started the year on fire and uh, it's a big part about why the Broncos have started so well. And I think if the Broncos are going to go deep into the finals and have a chance of winning the Premiership, it's going to come down to those three. If I was to pick one, it could be Andrew Reynolds. I think both Payne Haas and Reese Walsh might be involved uh, in State of Origin. And that middle period of the year, they might miss a few games, might be a bit flat. So uh, it'll be a big opportunity for Adam to step up and grab some points. Has Reese Walsh been the difference this season for the Broncos for, to see them on such a run? He's been phenomenal, phenomenal, hasn't he? It's been 10, 10 line break assists in three games for him. It's some pretty stunning numbers for a bloke. Obviously, going to a new club, trying to forge new combinations with the blokes around him. Uh, I think he's been the big difference. Just the silk on the end of their backline movements this season. We haven't seen much of Nico Hines this season. He only returned on the weekend, but he was so impressive. Six points to the Dally M. He's last year's Dally M winner. Can he go back to back, Josh? Oh, I think he can if he has performances like that. Their, their attack was probably clunky without him, and they just look like a completely different side and stacked on the points and a big reason of that was because of Nico. So if he continues that form, there's no doubt he can win it again. Well, another player that's been super impressive this, impressive this season has been Jacob Carraz for the Bulldogs. I mean, we really haven't heard much about him up until 2023. What have you made of his form so far? Oh, he's been outstanding for the Dogs. Um, uh, uh, gets through a mountain of work and if they win, it's normally on the back of, of his tough work coming out of his own end. So uh, if the Bulldogs can pick up um, a few wins throughout the season, he's going to be a big part of those wins and probably score points as do well. Think, do you think it's been surprising given the fact they've got, you know, Matt Burton, Viliami Kikau, Reid Marnie, you know, some, mm. some big name players. They've been playing some good football, you know, without, you know, winning every single game, yet he's polled a lot of points. Uh, you know, has done a lot of that tough work, but, you know, isn't one of those big name players that, you know, a lot of talk about at the start of the season. Yeah, well, I think you look at Josh Adokar on the other wing, Australian player and had, had a wonderful World Cup series Jacob played for Lebanon and had just as good a series. Um, he would want to be talked in the same realm as, as Josh Adokar, and at the moment he's probably playing better than him. So to have a winger on that other side of the field um, encourages you to play well, and I think we're seeing that. We talk about the outside backs of the Bulldogs. Let's focus our attention to some forwards who are up there in the Dallium count at the moment. Tino Fasulamala Awe and also to Payne Haas. A surprise, Tim, or they've been impressive? Not a surprise in terms of this season, just because of how good they have been for their respective clubs. I think if we're talking long term and looking at the, the Daly and winner, can a, a middle forward or even a forward for that matter take the most coveted prize in the NRL? History would suggest not. The last forward to win it outside of hookers was Jason Townlolo in 2016. He shared that with Cooper Cronk. Before Town and Lolo, we've got to go all the way back to 1988 and 89 when Gavin Miller, the Sharkies legend, went back to back for a forward twin it, as I said, outside of a number nine. So I think for, for middle forwards like Payne Hassantino for Sue Malawi, to do it week in, week out, as good as they are, it's a long, long season ahead. So we'll see if they can uh, break that, that curse. Well, we'll be talking about the highs of the Dally M's. Let's put the blowtorch on some of the low lights, perhaps, or players that aren't quite in the conversation yet. Nathan Cleary, he's not quite there this season. Are we surprised by that, Chris? Uh, I don't think so. I think you know, they've had a buy as well, so that's one less opportunity that he has had. Uh, and then obviously had uh, had a loss, and they haven't set the world on fire. So I don't think it's anything to be alarmed about. They'll find their groove, and it's going to come off the back of Nathan Cleary and their stars. So uh, I think for them, you know, and I think you'll find by around 12 to 14, you'll really start to see the pack sort themselves out and I think you'll be there. Just lastly, Cody Walker and also to a few, number of Rabbitohs players aren't in the conversation. Latrell Mitchell, oh, is that sort of expecting from what they've done so far in 2023? Yeah, like Chris said, I think they've had, had a loss as well and um, they haven't hit their straps just quite yet. I think Cody was outstanding on the weekend. Uh, they've got a big game against the Storm this weekend. So if they get a, another back-to-back -back win, I, I think Cody features there and scores points as well. So like Chris said, I think mid-season we'll probably start to see the, the emerging leaders and who's in with the best shot at winning this Dally M. Yes, plenty to talk about. And that's our early take on the Dally M Awards.
Parramatta's Premiership campaign is finally underway. But the big tests keep coming. They take on the Roosters to kickstart round five. Josh Morris is alongside me. Josh, is the old Parramatta back after that big win? Yeah, they certainly look like they're back. That was a, a really hard-fought win against the Panthers going into Golden Point. And, uh, they'll get a lot of confidence going out of that beating the Premiers. You know that there's been so much talk around contracts out there at Eels with Mitch Moses and now Clint Gutherson perhaps has switched to the centres. Is it a distraction for the club? No, I don't think so. I think Gutho, he's their captain. He knows what's best for the club. And if that means bringing in someone else to help the club, well, then he's certainly for that. Obviously, a big loss for the Eels this week. They will be without Junior Barlow. He's suspended. That is a big, big out for them. Yeah, massive. He's their, their forward pack leader. And uh, it means that uh, another couple of forwards are going to have to step up. And they're probably pretty light on middle forwards as well. So it's a big loss for them. Who are you tipping in this one and why? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm tipping the uh, the Roosters. They're fresh off the bye, but they had a really good performance against South. So they'll be looking to, to repeat that and then uh, take on take on Para for the win. Yeah, absolutely. This one could go right down to the wire, but former Chook Josh Morris is tipping a Roosters victory. Two last up winners go at it when the Rabbitohs host the Storm at home on Friday night. Chris Lawrence is alongside me. Chris, this looks like another tight affair, but you're backing the Bunnies in this one. Yeah, I'm going for South. I think they've played some really tough football over the last month. I only got the one win, but played some high quality sides, some semi-final football, and I think Getting that tight win against Manly is going to give them a lot of confidence and I think they can get the win. We know that Lachlan Ilias sealed that tight win last week. How much confidence does that give to the side and also too for the youngster? Oh, massive, massive confidence for, for Lockie Ilias. I think, and he was a young halfback in his first full season last year in a, in a side with a lot of dominant players, Latrell Mitchell, Cody Walker and Damian Cook. And I think for a young halfback, it takes time for them to find their voice. And I think, you know, this year he's definitely um, found that and, you know, that's going to give him a world of confidence, kicking that field goal. Obviously, the Storm got a confidence boost last week with the return of Cameron Munster. Were you convinced by their performance, though? No, I don't think so. I think they would, you know, they won against an understrength uh, and an out-of-form West Tigers side. Yes, Cam Munster back do definitely does help, but I think um, they're still a way off yet. So you're backing the Bunnies, but how much in this one? I think it's still going to be a tight game, but I think the last month of footy is going to hold South in good stead. Yeah, there you have it. The odds point to the Bunnies, ending their run of outs against the Storm and making it back-to-back -back wins. League is life. It's exhilaration, anticipation, highs and highlights. League is everything. That's why we've made a betting brand for league fans. That's better. Chances are you're about to lose. The Bulldogs failed to get the job done against the Warriors and now face a Cowboys side still chasing consistency. Tim Williams is alongside me. Tim, you're back in the Bulldogs to get the job done here. I am Eloise, yes. I think they had to come over a little bit of adversity early on in the season through key injuries to middle forwards. Their forward pack's been a little bit light on. The way they've managed to do that, and it's a credit to Cameron Serrato and the coaching staff, their back five have been tremendous, in particular their centres and wingers, led by Jacob Kiraz, who the last three games for the Doggies, he's averaged 26 runs per game, eight tackle busts per game. Jake Avrilo has been terrific. Paul Alamotti, Josh Adokar, so I think they can get the job done. An impressive outside five, outside backs, but what about in the halves? There is pressure building on Kyle Flanagan there. There's so much pressure on poor old Kyle Flanagan. It seems to be the story of his career a little bit, doesn't it? And the reason for that is, look, they need to be winning games for him to keep his spot because of Kyle Oluwapu, the young fella. He's 18 years old. Come down from Queensland, from the Broncos, has been killing it in reserve grade. So if the doggies aren't winning and Flano's struggling a little bit, he'll be in the NRL in no time. And just quickly on the Cowboys, a few big outs for them. Tower Lungy, Drinkwater, Cotter, Nanai. It's a lot to overcome for them. So, look, we've seen that the Cows overcome adversity in the past. They will later this season, but I still think the Doggies will be too strong at home this week. Yeah, there you have it. Tim Williams is predicting the Bulldogs to turn the tide on the Cowboys. Welcome back. The panel rejoins me to take a look at some big round five matchups. Well, let's start with the Raiders. Can they find themselves a win? They're so desperate for one. They come up against last year's premiers, the Panthers. Can they do it on Friday night, Tim? Uh, look, potentially, but they are up against it in this one. We know how, how hard the, the Panthers take a loss. Eight on the trot, following losses, they've come back and won the next game. What's upset me a little bit with the Raiders in recent weeks is that they're lacking a little strike power out wide. A lot of their game is focused through the middle, through their big, bustling forward pack. 
to create points, I think they need some second phase play and get the ball moving. They had three offloads last week up until about the 78th minute. Then there was a late one from Corey Harrow and Naira. I'd like to see them getting the arm free, playing a bit more second phase footy. Uh, so I'm a bit worried going into the game this weekend. Jack White a massive loss for him as well. Uh, I think he's the only one that kind of looks dangerous whenever they're down on the try line. We've got Rapana coming back. If I'm Ricky Stewart, I'm telling him, mate, be squeaky clean. We need your experience out there. But with Jordan, you just never know what's going to happen. He might fly out of the line and be out for another two weeks. So it's really on him to, to use his experience to, to get this side a win. I found, I found it, sorry, mate, really interesting last week. We saw a, a obviously clear touch from the Parramatta Eels kicking to Taruva in that game and keeping away from Brian Toto. Taruva ran for over 300 metres. 170 of those were via kick returns. Toto still ran for 240 metres and he had 25 metres in kick returns, which is remarkable. Talk about Jordan Rapana. Um, the last time they played, there was a bit of niggle. Steve Crichton, you know, being a bit lippy, mm. two sides came together. So there is that bit of bad blood there. If you're Ricky Stewart, do you use that to try and fire up your team, knowing that you've lost Jack Whiten? But the balance there with some of their players is you don't want to get suspended again, but you know, they're a type of side, they're not going to blow a team away. They need to get in that fight. Mm. They need to get in that grind. And is that the way to do it? Mm, certainly does come as a really spicy clash this Friday night. Now, you want, don't want to be Anthony Griffin right now. Four weeks into the season and the Dragons boss is under immense pressure as his side prepares to host the Dolphins in Wollongong. This is a big matchup. It's, I mean, it's really early days in the season, but Moses Embi has said this week, this is do or die for the Dragons season. Yeah, and when you say that, you're hoping that the players come out and perform for their coach. The last two weeks, uh, they had it uh, in the last 10 minutes against the Broncos, faded out. And then against the Sharks, they just didn't come out of the sheds. So they need to come out and put on a performance for their coach, for their town, and get some pride back in their jersey. Is that sort of what spurs on a team when they are so desperate that the Dolphins need to be wary of, do you think, Chris? I think so. When your back's against the wall, you do want to come out firing. However, in saying that, when you do have a lot of external distractions, that can take away from your performance. You can be too worried about everything else that's happening in the media, all the talk, all the uncertainty, particularly around the coach, especially for the guys potentially that are off contract and not knowing where they sit. So I think they need to start the game well. If they start the game well and they're focusing on footy, I think they have a chance of getting the job done. However, you know, if they don't start the game well, it could be another long night for them. A lot of off-field distractions for the Dragons, but Tim, what do you like about the Dolphins? We know they've lost Sean O'Sullivan for a period of time through injury, but what do you like about the Dolphins this week? Yeah, well, you nailed on the head there, Eloise. They've shown to be a very gritty side, but it is around Sean O'Sullivan. I'm really intrigued to see young Isaiah Katoa, the 18-year-old who has been a revelation this year, obviously got the nod for round one ahead of Anthony Milford, which surprised many. He's been wonderful so far in the NRL. But with Sean O'Sullivan gone, the general of that side, Katoa, along with Milford, is going to have to step up. Yeah, look, I, I think Sean O'Sullivan stepped up because Marshall King wasn't there as well. I think him coming back mm. will will really help Katoa. And obviously, Milford needs to stand up as well. He's the senior of the two. He's played a lot of football, so he needs to take the reins a little bit as well. And um, But I think Marshall King being back is a massive inclusion for them. Well, didn't one player take the reins this weekend that just passed? Cronulla Sharks, Nico Hines, he was so impressive. Do they get the win against a much, uh, well, Warriors that are much needed of a win? Yeah, look, I think they do. Uh, I just think they were, you know, they were outstanding on the weekend, uh, you know, against the Dragons, who were obviously, you know, down in confidence, down in form. But the way that, you know, Nico Hines just stepped in and the way he started, you know, after having missing those couple of weeks, it's like he, you know, started where he left off, the, you know, the previous year. And I think, you know, if he's directing the team, everyone gets confidence around him, and they just turn little opportunities into tries. And you know, the good sides do that. And I think if they do that in the weekend, it potentially could be a big score. What do we like about the Warriors this year? They've been super impressive. We know they've got a new coach at the helm, but they was, I mean, they prevailed over the weekend. Could they be a genuine top eight contender this year, Tim? From what we've seen, yes, Eloise, and I think uh, they've given us false hope in the past, the Warriors, after a few good performances earlier in the season. I just want to see them back it up now. Can they do it again? Now, gritty on the weekend, more injuries to their, their side. Torhu Harris was named, looks like he's in a little bit of doubt, so... Can they keep overcoming these injuries? Time will tell. Well, let's have a look at some of the other games in round one. All three panel members are tipping the Seagulls to beat the Knights. Josh and Tim are picking the Dragons. But Chris, well, he's siding with the Dolphins. While Chris is alone again in tipping the Tigers to beat the undefeated Broncos. Thanks to Chris, Josh and Tim for your time here this evening and for another big show. Don't forget to subscribe below and follow us on socials. We'll be back on Fox Sports Lab NRL next week. G'day.
G'day guys, the Better SC Playbook Multi of the Week for Round 5. We're going back to the well. We're going Ruben Garrick to score 60 plus official NRL fantasy points into Tom Trebojevic anytime try scorer at $3.60 against the Newcastle Knights in Mudgee. I love what Manly are doing with their left edge off the back of Tom Trebojevic, Ruben Garrick and Josh Schuster in the middle linking them up there. More so, I like the Knights' right edge, I think, defensively. Greg Marju, he's a terrific ball runner, but defensively he has his issues, so I think Garrett can capitalise on that. So that's my play for the week. Good luck. League is life. It's exhilaration, anticipation, highs and highlights. League is everything. That's why we've made a betting brand for league fans. That's better. Chances are you're about to lose.